Right, two issues. First of all, on the definition of refugees. I think in the current climate of warfare, the current state of, of armed conflict, in my opinion, virtually every civilian in a war theater that is not a combatant qualifies for refugee protection unless he is excluded by the convention as a war criminal. And the reality of it is that the protection of civilian currently in armed conflict is non-existent. They are targeted by all sides and therefore I think for the most part they qualify for refugee protection. Now, the suggestion that what we see these waves of young men coming into Europe are all uh, uh, economic migrants, frankly, it's hard to believe why these economic migrants would have paid thousands of dollars for the privilege of drowning in the Mediterranean, but that's a, another issue. Let me just address very briefly, and I hope we'll have an opportunity to return to that, uh, to the issues raised by these uh, newborn feminists there. Uh, and I see the clock running, so I uh, reserve my right to flesh out these ideas uh, a little more deeply, but I can assure you that for uh, those of us feminists who came, certainly the women of my generation, from a cultural, political environment in this country in which religion dictated most of our rights and privileges, we've managed to start occupying our, our place in public life, not by pushing and trying to exclude others, and certainly not by espousing as champions people who have that kind of ideology. Thank you. Okay. I want to hear from the, the pro team back to back. So Simon, let's have your rebuttal and then I'll come on to uh, Mark and Nigel. Okay, yeah, I was just struck by how obsessed with sex these two guys are, really, actually. It's a bit sad, really, actually. For, um, I don't know, I, I, again, I just want to make the point that if you really uh, think about, actually, the places, you know, from Afghanistan, for example, or Libya, um, or, of course, Syria, where most of the migrants are coming from, actually, um, it's, it, it's extraordinary to think that they're really just interested in um, a, a moment of possible upward social mobility. Those are all desperately brutalized, collapsing states um, from, you know, it, it, it's, it, to me, from which actually there seemed to be no possibility of normal life. It's very... It, it, and the notion that, first of all, I, I dispute those figures about, actually, the 77%, as I say. And it seems to me, if you are actually a family in terrible distress, and haven't we all seen, as Louise mentioned, dinghies and rubber crafts full of children, as well as, you know, with their elder brothers and fathers. So families are desperately trying to make it, often at the cost of their own lives. But supposing actually most of the people, you know, who are coming over, more than half are males, and this fits with the fact that more than half of those in displaced horrible camps like Atmar, where there are 58,000 people um, stuck there in Syria with desperate shortages, no sanitation, shortages of food and medicine. It'd be logical to send your brothers and uncles uh, and the men to see that's, that's how it was actually in the 80s, 1880s and 1990s. And all of those men arriving weren't arriving with the purpose of <laughs> upping their their rape score, either. So I'm going to have lots of time in the uh, cross-examination to get into these issues, but I want to come over to the other side and Mark Stein get uh, your quick reaction to what you've heard. Hey, I, I made a decision tonight uh, that I wasn't, I wasn't going to do funny stuff, I was going to be deadly serious. And I'm, I'm slightly amazed uh, at our colleagues' ability to get big laughs on gang rape. Uh, Ma Madame Arbor scoffs at the newfound feminists over here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not much of a feminist, but I draw the line at the, uh, the three-year-old getting raped and the seven-year-old getting gang raped in a basement. And when Simon, 
When Simon tells us that, oh, we're funnily enough, we're all obsessed of sick, maybe we don't get enough action in the Toronto singles bars. Madame Arbour, <laughs> Madame Arbour, as she said, is a feminist of a certain generation. And those feminists were very clear, as Madame Arbour was very clear in Sudan, uh, that rape is not about sex, whatever Simon may say, rape is about power, which is what Madame Arbour says. And we're not talking, we're not talking about the kind of sex I want to have. I ain't into three-year-old girls. Uh, but uh, the 14-year-old girl in Sudan, here's a random example from 10 days of German migrant crimes in January. 16-year-old boy raped inside Wolfsburg City Hall. 13-year-old girl sexually assaulted near a railway station in Elfagen. Three girls sexually assaulted at a swimming pool in Ansbach. 15-year-old girl raped at a railway station in Wuppertal. Attempted gang rape of a 13-year-old girl in Gelsenkirchen. I can go on and on. These are all rapes Gang rapes in public places, trains, streets, parks, and even City Hall. And I congratulate you on getting big laughs with that, Simon, and you, Louise. Because if I'd known that, I'd be doing open night mic on gang rape at a comedy club. It isn't okay. funny. It isn't funny. Okay, Mark, and it we'll be gets, able to get into this uh, later. Your time is up. And it gets Mark, to the Mark, heart of the question. Your time is up question. here. You're going to have to sit it down. It gets to the we'll heart get into of the it question. In the uh, moderated cross-examination.